Uh, hey, thanks for clicking on this video. Uh, before we get into it, I just wanted to put a disclaimer that this probably isn't the video you want to watch. I have a shorter version. Granted, it's still 45 minutes long, but uh, that version, I just cut out all of my complaining. On my Tour Divide setup video or my bike check video, I got a lot of questions about what worked well and what didn't or what lessons I learned. And I don't really know how to answer those questions. Uh, so this hour and a half long video is perhaps the most honest way I can answer those questions. Uh, it's not, I'm not really going to give commentary because I do a lot of talking to the camera in the video, but uh, if there's any other things that I think of uh, along the way, I'll chime in. Um, but hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, you probably, do, again, probably don't want this video. You probably want the shorter one. This one, I complain a lot. Just buy some garbage cans. <laughs> What, uh, what start weight are you on? Abbreviated and... Uh, 7.25. Good luck. Go Fox, it's 6.55, should we go? Let's go! A designated dog in every town that we get to just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Good, how are you? Good. You ready? Just watch when you go down the hills and you're wet, that's when you cool down. Right? And then we use the heat. Right? So if you're not in if you're not setting a world Spike record great. on the oh, downhill, ride Thanks. the brake like yeah. you would go up the hill. I'm doing and, crazy Larry live in location 2024. It is just a crazy cheer that's gonna go on. Alright, let's do it. <laughs> hip hip! Hey! Hip hip! Hey! Are you guys excited? Yeah! Alright, get the hell go! Four hours in. Uh, on this, is this the high rocky or is this the spray trail? I don't know. Anyway, this is roughly where I got my flat tire last year. Can't, I haven't seen the exact spot yet. I don't know if I'll recognize it or not, but this section is so much fun. Get along!
That was close enough. <laughs> Day one tour divide update. Uh, we're nine hours in. Weather's been great. I'm at mile 90, so Coco's coming up here. Feeling good about it. I've been, um, it's kind of windy. Been off and on the bike a couple times today. Hiked a bit of Elk Pass. Um, but otherwise, you know, been chugging along here. Legs feel good. Maybe I'll do an intro? Is this an intro? Uh, flew to Canada on Tuesday. Flew into Calgary. And then rode to Banff over the course of two days. Um, it's like a 115 mile route or something. And uh, it was mostly, uh, mostly gravel and camped halfway. And, it was awesome. Uh, there's th three of us, three single speeders, Jacob and Alex. Uh, anyway, so that was Tuesday. It's now Friday. Uh, 4.30 on Friday. Um, plan for the rest of today. It's 4.30 probably ride for another five or six hours maybe I don't know we'll see I don't know we'll see how long Coco takes I'm anticipating that'll be like a three hour fucking hike so so far so good uh, last summer they had fires all through here and that lake was just like surrounded by trees and now it's all burnt up. Wow. We're 100 miles into day one, and this is Coco Claims. Fifteen and a half hours into the into the deal, almost eleven o'clock. Day two. Been moving for over an hour now. Trying to get to Fernie. Had a bag of M&Ms for breakfast. Not particularly hungry, but I can tell that I need to eat food. So, trying to get to Fernie. tell but right down there I think those are moose could could be cow none of them are moving I think it's just burnt logs doesn't that one look like it's looking at me though oh wait something just moved 
Yeah, they're moving. No. They're moose. 100%. Oh, well, it's three o'clock on day two. Got our first rain. Probably rain for two hours. Uh, got pretty cold too. <laughs> like in the low 30s. Dropped from, I don't know, 60 down into the low 30s. And uh, I was going by Butt's cabin. And thought I was gonna have to stop and waited out, but this kept on, and now the rain has pretty much stopped. Uh, on the on the approach to the wall, still a ways a ways out, I suppose, but. the lead up to the wall. It's just like bushwhacky through here. It's like a grizzly maze. I bet, I bet the grizzlies are the ones that keep this trail maintained. Aside from the 200 people that come through here a year. Ten o'clock. I'm at the top of Galton Pass. And it's snowing. And it's pretty. Today has been very difficult. There's been uh, some very cold rain at times. Uh, enough so that I was Almost not even gonna come up and do Galton tonight, but here we are. Yeah, I might go quick for me. Day three, Kootenai National Forest. I think this is, what is this, bald? Is it bald, bald mountain over here? Let me drop off, drop down, and then uh, go up the backside of Red Meadow, I guess. Managing some some problems today. I've got uh, my Achilles on both feet are pretty sore. My knees not doing great. Too much too much hiking first two days. Got a late start. Slept in Fernie. Got breakfast at Jack's. It's raining, by the way. <sighs> On Red Meadow Pass Road, I guess is what it's called. Well, I haven't had any power all day. My Achilles and my knee are pretty much zapping me, but I'm moving. We're 60, 70, 70 miles into the day. Wait, never mind. We're 50 miles in. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Almost up to Red Meadow, Red Meadow Lake. Uh, man, the weather has just been unhinged. It's like. It'll be like snowing and like sleeting 
and 30 degrees one minute and then the next minute it'll be like I don't know 55 and clear like it is now not complaining Wow, what an absolute treat. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh man, I thought for sure it was gonna be a snowstorm up here. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is downright pleasant up here, huh? <laughs> I guess this is the reward we get for... I was... down into uh into whitefish man i'm i'm blown away at the weather at how i was able to make it here i really wasn't sure i was going to be able to even leave fernie or uh, eureka this morning ah i'm so grateful and there that just goes to show you like always press on always like just keep moving even as i was leaving this morning while i was riding i was like okay there's a campground just three miles up here if it still hurts i can pull off there and i'll rest up but I got there, kept pedaling, kept moving, kept moving, kept pedaling. Uh, and it's been touch and go, like my, my Achilles and my knee are still, we're not out of the woods yet, but uh, we're just gonna try to, like right now, it really fucking hurts. But I had power uh climbing red meadow so that was great made it from red meadow turn off there all the way up to the lake in an hour and a half I'm riding to columbia falls just uh buzz through whitefish there's like a big crew of people cheering as i entered the town of course, they had seen on the tracker my name, so they were yelling for me. Still have some knee things and uh, Achilles things going on, but I decided I'm not going to talk about that because every time I mention it, every time I. Hi, dog! Hi, friend! if he was friend or not. Anyway, every time I mention my knee and the Achilles, it starts to hurt again, so we're fucking done talking about that. It's day four. Uh, late. Later. Late-ish. Day four. I think it's like 5.30 or 6 o'clock or something. Today has been tough. Again. Uh... I'm not going to mention my knee and Achilles pain, but otherwise it's been tough because of, uh, it's pretty cold, 
and it was snowing and raining most of the morning, most of the afternoon, cleared up like an hour and a half ago. So, um, about to descend into Holland Lake. It's day five. Uh, we were supposed to get, we were supposed to get like a foot of snow last night. Uh, didn't materialize, but some guy that lived uh, just off route, or on route, rather, uh, like a mile and a half, two miles from Holland Lake here, <clears throat> uh, took 10 of us in. And we all slept on the floor and uh, had a nice, warm, dry night, but back at it today. And it's uh, raining and cold, and Richmond Peak is in front of me, and Holland Lake. at the top of uh, Richmond Peak. <clears throat> Bit of snow up here. Richmond Peak on my way to Ovando and I'm not wearing my rain jacket for the first time in 400 miles <laughs> definitely since Canada uh, I've had my rain kit on the entire time saddle adjustment this morning went up uh, like five mil <laughs> hardly anything like I don't know if you can see that but seems to have made a pretty big difference my Achilles are not so sore my knee is kind of hit and miss but look what Look where we're at. What 
a specimen. That's the sun. See that? Haven't seen that since uh, since we left Banff. Anyway, uh, it's like 8.30, just left Lincoln, called up to the Llama Ranch, got myself a cabin, 22 miles up. Uh, yeah, 8.30 should take probably three hours actually. It's, it's kind of a, kind of a climb, but then, uh, heck yeah, got out of Lincoln. Free stay. Last year, the uh, the turnoff. I think it's is it Stemple or is it Priest? I think it's Priest Stemple. Uh, and then I don't know what the third pass is here. But last year I missed the turnoff here. Uh, it was my only like I don't know semi major kerfuffle. I think I would climbed an extra three or four miles past the turnoff. So not gonna do that this year. Gonna keep my eyes glued to the map and uh, get to Long Ranch. Whew, almost at the top of the pass here, I think like five miles, five miles away from, uh, Seven miles away from the Llama Ranch. It's quarter after ten. I thought it would maybe take like three hours. And I uh, left Lincoln at 8.30. So that would put me there roughly at 11.30. What's up MTV Cribs? Uh, welcome to my crib. We're at the Llama Ranch. Um, I'm eating Nutter Butters. Day six, I think. I honestly have no idea. I left Llama Ranch. Uh, stayed there last night. Left there. Got a late start just because it was so nice to be in a bed. Uh, so. Anyway, rolling to rolling to Helena right now. reception in the bag so I thought I'd be annoyed with it like rattling on the handlebar bag like that but I don't know I don't care at this point It's uh, 5.30, this day is just dragging on and I am going very slowly. Uh, spent a couple hours at Great Divide bike shop in Helena. Uh, my free hub body was getting chunky and sticky. So they uh, got me serviced and Retensioned my rear wheel, so otherwise bike is good. I think feeling confident about moving forward. Helena is really the last dependable 
I mean, I'm not trying to talk shit, but there, there are other bike shops, but they're the last dependable uh, bike shop until Steamboat. So that's like, I don't know what mile, what mile, I have no idea what mileage I'm at, like 700 something. And Steamboat is 1300, right? Or 14, 1400 maybe even. So it's a, it's a long ways to Steamboat from here. Um, but my chain, my chain's been good. I've only had to apply chain lube like three times so far. The Wolf Tooth WT whatever, WT1, is so good. It's the best, I used to be a Dumont Tech guy and that stuff is good too. But this Wolf Tooth stuff is just next level. It's, it's, uh, it's wild. But anyway, Lava Mountain is up the road. Uh, then it's Basin. Basin. Uh, I'm gonna miss the the uh, bar or whatever they have there, but I don't I don't really care. Wasn't really planning on needing it or stopping anyway. I've got a sandwich and a bunch of snacks and whatnot. So I'd really like to make Butte tonight. Again, it's already almost six o'clock, so it's kind of not great. But whatever. Some days will be slow, I guess, and other days I'll be able to click them off, but it's pretty up here. Last year I rode a lot of this section with uh, Sarah Swallow and I just remember it going by so quickly. Like we chatted all the way up this climb, really. Um, but today it just is never ending. And I remember that there's a lake up here right before it turns to like the real shitty jeep trail so <laughs> i feel like i'm never gonna get to that lake so i'm rambling i should be pedaling i am pedaling but i should be pedaling faster Still on Lava Mountain, but I've made it to the actual uh, chunky, sometimes mostly hike a bike section. So, man, it's going so <laughs> slow today. Oh, I can't tell you how just draining today has been. I have a mile left of this climb. I'm 64.19 miles in for the day. 6,758 feet of climbing. It is just before seven o'clock. So. Ready to get this climb over with. And then we'll see if I if I have it in me to make it to Butte. I've got to. 35 miles after basin. 2300 feet of climbing.
So as I'm sure I mentioned yesterday, getting off of a uh, lava mountain, my knee was, it, it was incredibly painful. I couldn't, I couldn't even stand on the pedals. Um, and today it's just very tired and sore. Um, so I've kind of made, <clears throat> made the decision to let the 20 day goal go. Um, but we're not quitting the ride. Uh, Butte is, I think 40 miles up the road. Um, maybe a little less and it's pretty gentle and rolling. And so I may just roll there, um, get a hotel and, uh, actually do laundry and stuff and sleep in a bed. Um, but not going to make any decisions until I get moving. Uh, it's almost 8.30. And so let's just, uh, let's just see how this goes. Just past uh, <clears throat> road grader and watering truck back there. And I was worried that Normally, like when the water trucks are coming through, they just like overwater it, you know, to to pack it in. Uh, but it's kind of like they groomed it especially for me right now. It's so good. So, uh, <clears throat> pretty disappointed in myself. Um, I've got a lot of knee pain and Achilles pain, but disappointed that, uh, I'm not, I'm disappointed because I, I'm selling myself short. I can, I can work through this. Um, in Eureka on uh, the morning of day three, I didn't think, I didn't think I was going to be able to leave Eureka. The pain was so bad. This ride just means so, so much to me. And for me to just like lay up and give up on myself like that fucking hurts. I'm not ready to give up. Navigation difficult uh, in Butte. I don't remember it being so convoluted the last time, but making my way. Uh, I think this is well, this is Friday, so it's the start of day eight. 10 o'clock already. Uh, south of Butte, as you can tell by the uh, by the bridge. I think the actual GD MBR route goes on that bridge. Because I've seen video of people 
on it. Uh, grabbed a hotel in Butte last night. Uh, like, I was there at like three o'clock. So, uh, did laundry, uh, took a shower, iced and elevated my Achilles, my knee, like just, and then went to bed like it, I was sleeping like at 7.30 or eight o'clock um, and slept till six this morning. And uh, I don't know, I called my dad called Julie. Uh, not sure... Not sure how I'm going to be able to continue. Last year I rode Felisa Ridge, but I had a dropper post. So we'll see what conditions are like. Probably won't ride all of it, but I'll give it a shot. It's so steep. All right. No way that this even remotely does it justice, but like the trees grow vertical, right? So you can tell how much of a slope. It's just, it's just bananas. I, I've, I don't think I've ever seen a road so steep anywhere, ever.
that skidding technique is pretty effective. And <laughs> downstepping hurts my knee so much. I wish I could just ride this. painful Whew. glad to be down moon on Bannock Road. I think it's summer solstice today or yesterday. 115 miles in. Not bad for sitting on the right side of the road in Butte. Not sure if I was gonna even continue to Day nine. Day nine. Montana. What an incredible state. So, so beautiful. It's, it's quite remarkable. I uh, feel very glad to have experienced it again. It uh, doesn't disappoint. But, it's time to be moving on. It's time to be moving on to a little place called Idaho. Howdy! Welcome to Idaho! Beautiful!
they're gone. Last year, uh, last year I stayed in this outhouse, porta potty thing, and sewed my rain pants because they were ripped, and got up in the morning and left them, but they're not here, so they're gone. Just coming over, actually I don't know what the name of this pass is, but it's uh, Targi National Forest area. And so I'll be dropping into uh, Flag Ranch fairly soon. Um, unfortunately, it's eight o'clock, so I think I'm gonna probably miss good lighting on the Tetons, but maybe, uh, maybe they'll, maybe they'll still put on a show for us, but can't complain about being out here right now. It is so gosh dang nice. I may not be hitting the Tetons at the right time, but I'm hitting Grassy Lake at the right time. So that's my friend. Buddy the bear. I got him from, I got him in Buddy, Montana. So in lieu of carrying bear spray this year, I decided to carry honey and hopefully barter with the beasts.
A little dip of the cap. Oh, so I slept in that uh, pit toilet. It's just inside, uh, just inside the park, Grand Teton. Um, got going this morning. Got breakfast at that cafe. Hiking up Togety, and my knee is so wrecked. Supposed to do, trying to do, Union Pass today. And unless things change, we are not making it over. Shouldn't have come up here tonight. I was at uh, Lava Mountain Lodge. And I was frustrated because they didn't have any rooms available. They didn't have any snacks. They weren't serving food until like seven. So, out of frustration, I fucking left with hardly enough food my knee is fucking destroyed lots of hike to bike to get up here morning from Strawberry Creek Safety Shelter. Uh, it's at the top of Union Pass. I got here like at 10 o'clock last night and one other guy is here and he's touring but had a really good night of sleep. There was some mice running around but didn't get into any of my stuff. But uh, game plan for today is Pinedale and see what's see what's what.
Absolutely beautiful day out here. No wind. Overcast. It's like 65 degrees. It's beautiful. Unfortunately, I think I've um, I've kind of delayed the inevitable as long as I can. Uh, I don't know what I thought. I thought I could ignore the pain or I thought it would go away. I don't know. Um left the hotel at four this morning and um, took a short day yesterday. Had planned on getting a bunch of rest and recovering and getting back after it today, but um, so many mosquitoes I gotta keep moving. Um, can't even fucking ride up this. It's like 2% grade. And I got nothing. Like, I can't even fucking turn the pedal over. Ah. Yeah, so... Left Pinedale this morning and 40 miles into the day and um, I just uh, I can't do it anymore. There's a bit of, there's the safety aspect as well, like I don't, Day 13, all right, um, left Pinedale at four this morning. It's been, uh, it's been a frustrating day, honestly. The riding has been super easy, but I, I can't, uh, I can't pedal up anything. Uh, this is like a 2% fucking grade here and can't do it. I haven't been able to get out of the saddle and pedal since Huckleberry Pass, which is after Ovando. It's really, it's really not so much 
the pain at this point because it is what it is and I can deal with it for the most part. It's now like just the frustration of not being able to push, not being able to ride, not being able to click off miles like I know I can. So, also today I've seen like six northbound riders already this morning, which seems seems like a lot, but you know, getting to the halfway point and so whoever uh, kick things off down south is about the same spot. Did you all come from the well? What? Is the well just over there? Is that where you came from? The uh, well? Yeah, Are you di talking about the diagonal well. Was able to find this place. It's kind of uh, kind of tricky.
So I think this is the one and only uh, River Creek Crossing, uh, so uh, at least I'm doing it midday when I don't mind getting wet, so. Almost looks rideable depth-wise, but there's some bigger rocks out there that I think, and I also don't want to get water in my wheel or bottom racket, so we're going to walk. Also done there, it looks pretty shallow. Rather than dicking around, just go through it. Here a handful of miles before Silverthorn. Beautiful sunset over Williams Fork. You passed Steve. You passed Steve. <laughs> Look at that rainbow.
real talk, the past five, four or five days have been a serious struggle. Uh, <clears throat> just can't get into a rhythm, can't find the motivation to ride. I don't know. Hoping to turn things around here, but it's uh, it's definitely been a struggle. Good morning from uh, Boreas Pass. I don't know why I'm whispering. I'm the only one up here. Uh, stayed at that Bivy Hostel in Breck last night. Decent place. Got, got going at like five this morning and Boreas Pass. It's in my top five climbs of the Tour Divide. Uh, stay tuned till the end uh, when I reveal my top five climbs of the Tour Divide. I've been thinking a lot about it. So, gonna have a good day. Top of Boreas Pass. And there's a cyber truck at that at that hut over there. Gold Dust Trail is one of those uh, sneaky turns. So we don't descend on the road. We hop off on some. I think it's single track uh, called Gold Dust Trail. So. I'll be keeping my eyes peeled for that. This must be Hartzell. Driven, driven through here, but obviously never, uh, never spent any time here. Wait, this might not even be Hartzell. Cause there's, I don't know where the highway is. 285's over here. So maybe it is. This must be. That wasn't Hartzell, that was Como. Hartzell's up here. Y'all can hear that, right? I just rode past this road packer thing, road tractor, whatever. I don't know what the name of it is. There's no, I haven't seen I haven't seen a car in quite a while. But that, thing, that thing's running. Kinda wanna go take it for a drive. I could go flatten off that Elkhorn Road. That was a piece of shit. Making note of that place. If I ever need a uh, place to crash out here. I found the road maintenance crew.
Alex just finished this morning. Uh, he won. Congratulations. Hell of a ride. Really impressive. Um, also, I think Jacob might be finishing tonight or tomorrow sometime. Also a very impressive ride. So, good on him. But I'm going to get moving.